Hey girl gang! In today's video, I will be taking you through the process of my newest illustration from the concept all the way until the finished gouache painting. So to start, what sparked the inspiration for this piece was when I had come across an article or photo about Tsukban. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but basically um, what it means is it's the boss girl of school girl gangs in Japan that arose in the 70s. So naturally when I came across this, I had to do my own modern version of these badass ladies. Typically when I work on an illustration, I'll gather some inspiration photos and references from Pinterest and Google. Then I'll begin the sketch on my iPad using the Procreate app. The reason I prefer to sketch digitally is because it allows me a lot of flexibility in rearranging the sketch and deciding on the color palette. For this video, I just imported the time-lapse recording of the Procreate app. The first big inspiration I took from this image here, I just loved the movement in the skirt, so I knew I wanted to incorporate that into my piece. I also liked the idea of having a baseball bat as the weapon of choice, which is where I came across this image. I loved the pose and the way that the top sort of jutted out from her body because I felt like it created an interesting silhouette. And with these things in mind, I decided that maybe I'd create the illusion of a gust of wind that has blown past her, which creates the movement in her clothes and in turn her hair as well. And I felt like that helped create a bit more of a dynamic element to the piece since it's just a standing pose, so I didn't want it to feel too stiff. And lastly, I saw a ton of photos of these really fun half pleated skirts paired with leather garters. So I knew I had to include that for this gal as well. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen in my stories that I was being really indecisive about the color palette. But in the end, I went with my tried and true pink and blue color combo. I also decided to give a strong light coming from the left side, so I included like a white pink halo effect on the figure as well. After I finish the sketch and decide on the color palette, I will print out the sketch onto regular copy paper and using my light pad, I lightly trace the sketch onto watercolor paper using a red Colerase Prismacolor pencil. When I have finished transferring the sketch, I then go over the line art again with a Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencil, which may seem tedious, but this particular color pencil is oil-based, which will resist smudging when I use wet media on it, as opposed to the Prismacolor Cola Race, which is erasable. I use this method when I paint with watercolors as well. I prefer it over graphite pencils because I find that when the graphite smudges, it mixes with the paint and it ends up graying all the colors. For the first layer, I used a combination of Naples yellow, scarlet, and white for the skin. I have a number of ways I approach blending gouache. Sometimes I'll lay the base color first, but I guess for the face, I decided to lay down the blush color first and then the base color. If you work fairly quickly while the paint is still wet, when you lay the two colors down next to each other, you're able to use your wet brush to blend them. The thing to remember when using acrylic gouache is that it dries fairly quickly and when it does dry, it's permanent. Unlike regular gouache that can be reactivated after it's been dry. Another thing worth noting is that when the paint dries down, there may be a slight color shift from when it was wet. Typically light colors will dry a little darker and dark colors dry a little lighter. As always, I definitely recommend having a piece of scrap paper to do color tests on if you're worried about committing it to your actual piece. Another blending technique that you'll see me use throughout the piece is I'll lay down some paint, then using a clean wet brush, I'll soften the edges of the paint I laid down so that it creates a gradient into the existing layer. This technique I use uh, with a wet brush to blend is a huge benefit of using acrylic gouache because as long as the layer underneath it is dry, it won't be disturbed when you use more water on top of it. This type of technique I think is the reason why I generally prefer acrylic gouache over regular gouache because it's just something that I'm more used to in terms of blending. And then from there, I moved onto the hair. So another thing to note about my process is I jump around from element to element. The reason for that is colors and values appear so much more saturated and contrasted against the white paper. But as soon as there are other elements in the mix, the previous layer may look dull or need adjusting. 
And this exact thing happened as soon as I added that bright pink hair. For me, the skin looked so much duller than I'd wanted, so to increase the saturation, I ended up doing another skin mix using the magenta from the hair as opposed to the scarlet that I used at the beginning. This helps create a harmony between the skin and the hair and increases the saturation. Then I moved on to adding in the red elements of the piece. Similarly to adding in the hair, I knew that this bold color would help dictate how much warmer I wanted the skin to look. So with red paint I had mixed, I used a very watered down version of it to glaze onto the skin. And by glaze, I mean create basically a transparent layer on top. Using this much water on existing layers would probably not work with regular gouache because it would likely lift up the layers underneath. And continuing to use the red mixture, I began to use it to block out the more defined shadows that would be in the piece. I knew that ultimately I wanted the shadows to be a cool color, but I had some leftover paint, so I figured why not map it out beforehand. Then from there, I started adding some lighter areas, mainly to the elements on the far left. This helps enforce the brighter light coming from the left and we're now giving some dimension to the hair. Another thing to keep in mind when working with acrylic gouache is that as I mentioned before, when it dries, it's permanent. And unfortunately, that is the case for your mixing palette as well. So typically, I try not to mix huge batches of paint if I know there isn't going to be a huge surface area to cover. Because once that paint dries up, I can't use it anymore. And we definitely don't want to be wasting paint if we can help it. Okay, so some of you may know I film everything on my phone. So unfortunately, I did lose some footage here due to running out of space on my phone. But basically, I had added in some purple shadows throughout the skin and the baseball bat. Then from here, I am basically just putting in a big single flat layer of navy blue to cover the uniform. The initial layer of blue that I had used was much too bright for what I wanted. So here I am going in with a much darker navy to match closer to what I had originally envisioned. I also mixed up a more purple version of this color that would mostly be contained to the left side of the uniform. This is to mimic the pink lighting overlay that I had used in my digital version. If you are a digital artist, then you might basically see this as me putting a pink overlay layer, but manually by paint, which takes so much longer. <laughs> then for the right side of the uniform, I'm using a cooler version of the navy blue. Doing this also helps create a subtle dimension to the figure, as well as reinforce the aforementioned pink lighting. So coming up, I am going to apologize for some lost footage again for the same reason I had earlier, but basically I filled in the rest of the uniform as mentioned, and then I began to add in some lighter blue highlights to the right side as a secondary cool light. And I also did a flat light blue background as well. And now that all the major elements have been laid down, I go back in again to refine the areas that I think could use some more finesse. And then here you can see me, I uh, am reinforcing the pink that helps transition the base skin color into the cool purple shadow of the skin. Then using that same pink paint, I use it to create a more saturated halo effect to the side, left side elements of the illustration. This helps bring that color into the uniform so that it feels more cohesive and creates more visual interest for such a large area of one color. 
I wanted the baseball bat to have some more separation from the navy uniform, so I went in with this soft brown to help make it stand out more. And I then used that same color to fill in her eyes and her eyebrows. I feel like part of my painting process is just finding ways to use leftover paint before it dries out. Then at this point, I felt like the uniform was looking too flat. So using that glazing technique, I put a very diluted hot pink layer on the left side mostly to make that pink halo glow more pronounced. I also felt like that background color was leaning to turquoise, so I put down a new light blue that leaned a little more purple so that it felt more harmonious with the secondarily blue light that I created on the right side of the uniform and that way it fit a little better with the overall purpley uh, color palette of this piece. And something that I had lost during the painting process was the pleats of the skirt. So using a watercolor pencil, I sketched those back in and then using the light blue paint that I'd used for the background, I helped redefine the edges of the skirt. And I am also laying down another glaze of navy blue to help blend in that highlight I just put in. Then to continue adding more dimension, I laid down some dark navy shadows. This helps define the different elements of the uniform. It also suggests some of the figure's form underneath the shirt, and it also creates some folds in the clothing, particularly on the sleeve where her arm is bent. And now that I have this dark navy paint mixed already, I go in and define her eyes and her eyebrows using a really, really fine point paintbrush. This is probably one of the most stressful parts of the painting because it's so close to being done. And if I mess this element up, then I feel like the whole illustration would be ruined. This piece took me quite a while, so unfortunately I ran out of space on my phone again. But the main thing that was missed was I used a thin white paint marker to add in the stripes on her uniform. And I also added in the pink cherry blossom petals to the rest of the illustration. And here I'm now adding in some more shadows to her hair since I felt like it was looking pretty flat compared to everything else, so I'm helping give it a little bit more dimension. One of the reasons why I ended up choosing to have these flowing cherry blossoms was that I felt like there was so much navy blue happening in the illustration, which was kind of unavoidable since that's just the way that the uniforms look. And so I felt like having these cherry blossoms floating helped break up this mass amount of one color. And it also helped um, enforce the kind of wind uh, that I had mentioned earlier. At 
at this point of the illustration, I'm pretty happy with how everything looks. So I begin adding in the final touches. So with a very fine point brush, the one I used for her eyes and eyebrows, I begin putting in the line art to define the edges and give the piece a more crisp finish. For the left areas, I used a magenta, and for the right side areas, I used a dark navy. When filming and editing this piece, I put most of the focus on the area around her face since that is the main focal point of the piece. But I do have to admit that this little area around her thigh might be my favorite part. I just love the movement in the skirt and the way that the colors in the shadow look. It's just so satisfying to look out for me. Insert chef's kiss here. <laughs> Then, with that white paint marker again, I add in some tiny highlights to her eyes and face. And that is the final piece! I hope that this walkthrough was helpful and didn't feel too repetitive. My process isn't really like a step one, step two, step three, so I figured I'd just thoroughly explain everything that I'm doing. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you so so much. I hope that you have an amazing week, and until next time, bye!